So just showing you here the safe harbor statement, uh, making sure uh, that that's read, and hopefully you've had enough time to, to do that while I jabber on about Tennessee. So here we go. Welcome to uh, shareholder call number five. As usual, we are honored to represent you as shareholders. Uh, we ourselves are shareholders and our goal is to build a long-term brand um, with a lot of staying power around the technologies that we're trying to package up into, into one click, particularly blockchain and anything digitally related to, to payments and assets. So that's our goal here at Humble. It's what we are working on. Uh, one of these days I'm going to have to, uh, to, to pre-record this and come watch one of the, uh, come watch one of the, 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 the shareholder conference call parties that I know are out there and I'll be sure to try to get you, uh, you guys on your way for a Friday because I know there's some bingo cards out there. So, okay, so th this call today is gonna be a little bit more meat and potatoes than our usual stuff, just because there's some business items, some housekeeping items that we need to, uh, to take care of. Also, I wanna say in advance, we've had some weird sort of fire drill announcements at the hotel. So if we have to, to break it all, I apologize for that, uh, but we'll try to get through it without any of that inconvenience. I also see some chats coming in on my thing. So if it's something, just give me one. Great, cool. All right, so nothing important on chat. We'll get into it. Uh, in terms of the business insights, we're gonna share with you all some of the patent filings that we've done. Uh, I'll also go into the preferred B share structure just to make sure that's covered off. Um, and so on, and then and then the M and A updates, uh, some of which were announced even today with Monster LA on the creative uh, studio side. So, was so honored to be working with some of these people that we're uh, merging and acquiring with. Uh, from a product roadmap perspective, we have really clear goals in the three interrelated divisions that we need to to get done between now and the end of the year. Obviously, you want it all tomorrow. I know that. And it's something that I do too, but you have to balance out good meetings with product, project management, technology teams, not burn everybody out. Um, so we are pushing as hard as we can on the envelope to get to things like peer-to-peer -peer in the mobile app, as well as some digital asset inclusion features. Uh, on the marketplace side, it's all about NFTs and ticketing. We think there's a continuum there of mobile pay, ticketing, and NFTs that's just going to knock it out of the park for Humble and give people a really immersive experience, whether it's at live events or uh, buying and selling digital assets online. So uh, that's something we feel really confident we can package up into one click in a really novel way compared to uh, anybody else in the market, frankly. And then from a financial perspective, our ETXs, we know we need to get those down into one click. They're really elegant products. They're crushing it for people, but we need to get those down into one click. So it's never our desire to design products with friction. It's just a matter of sometimes there's regulatory or custodial issues or um, just silos that we will ultimately break down into one click uh, for the customer. Um, and that tokenization on the blockchain heralds a lot of new opportunities for doing that. It, our whole goal is to get into the swipe left, swipe, swipe right elastic continuum where you're able to you know, buy a ticket, list an NFT, sell an NFT, invest in one click in ETX products. That's our goal. That's what we're trying to build at Humble. We're not gonna get there overnight. If that's your need, then just sell, uh, cause it's not gonna happen overnight, but we are absolutely committed to come to work every day and do, do that. Um, from a funding perspective, I would say we're thankful that we're gonna get into this equity line of credit, um, uh, equity line of, of up to 50 million um, for the financing piece. So that's terrific. And we're doing some bridge round activities uh, between now and then that we feel really comfortable with. We don't burn a ton of money. Uh, I'd like to ramp it a little bit on marketing, although we're looking at some, some trade deals with some potential media uh, conglomerates that might take care of that for us. But meantime, you know, we're we're really thoughtful about the burn rate. We want to get into through that bridge round into the into the equity line, and and we'll be doing some fundraising addition additionally um, on top of that um, to try to get really strong sort of um, coffers to take a run at this thing. I think if you you know you give us that fifty to one hundred million dollars in funding. Um, we're going to show up to work every single day underneath this brand construct and these clear things that we need to do and just keep coming at it until we win. 
Um, so that's kind of our company motto and thesis and, and how we roll. So, uh, and then from a people perspective, we already issued the PR of the 15 or 20 new people that we've hired. And this is everything from new technologists to uh, ticketing integrations lead that's going to help bring Tickery into our fold and certainly explore some of the secondary ticketing markets as well. Um, we'll continue to do M&A. You know, I really wanted to do a ticketing um, purchase, really wanted to do a Hollywood creative studio. And the last thing I really have my eye on is the delivery acquisition. So some kind of micro cap, small cap delivery business or um, something that's, you know, either domestic or overseas. I think the unit economics of delivery work out overseas a little bit better just because of compressed labor rates and, you know, urban density items and things like that. So we'll be rapidly exploring delivery on the M&A side. So that's kind of an update for, for the month. I'll get you into some, uh, some specific slides and so on about who we are and what we're doing. So we like to quickly take five minutes and just kind of connect with people who are new to, to, uh, to Humble, just to make sure you all are aware of what, what we're building. Um, so our whole goal is to build an Amazon for digital assets. You know, we went back and studied Web 1.0, uh, the read, read, read web, and then Web 2, read, write. And then we think Web 3 is read, write, transact, the ability to take some of what's been done and you know, posting pictures or ordering a shoebox to your door and moving that upstream into the tokenization of digital assets. So we'll be working on that here at Humble. And um, fortunately, blockchain tokenization is synthetic enough that you can build across different asset classes and make them um, communicate with one another and between people. So it's a really exciting discipline and it's something that we think we can take a good, good run at. The three target audiences that we are addressing are consumers, freelancers, and merchants. So if you look at freelancers, they're sort of the uh, number one growth zone of the millennial and Gen Z economy. So working and getting paid from wherever you are, we think there's a big opportunity there with our mobile application, certainly both on the peer cash side, but peer digital as well, peer-to-peer uh, -peer stable coins, and then also just point and pay. If you, know, you took a yoga class in the park, the desire is not to have to put a piece of hardware on your phone or you know, send a check in the mail. We think there's a lot of opportunity there in the freelance slash independent contractor zone. So those are the target audiences that we're building this um, synthetic continuum to serve. The three divisions we have are Humble Pay, Humble Marketplace, and Humble Financial. So we studied Web2 with Alipay, Alibaba, and Ant Financial and how they pass the customer through. It doesn't make sense for us to sell, sell you an NFT of an NFL quarterback and not sell you a ticket on that same portal uh, that could have an immersive experience or some kind of um, convergence between those two modalities. So um, that's what we're building. We, we think it would be um, sort of uh, antithetical for us to send customers away to do other stuff. Um, so, so we're building these things to ultimately have a zero silo framework uh, between all of them and your customer experience and, and your happy path. I think in the developed markets, what we really want to focus on is simplifying blockchain in the sense that, um, you know, there may be some more mature hardware cycles in the US or China or India. Um, in, in some of these markets where hardware is, is sort of, um, you know, uh, a majority of the install base, our thesis is more to focus on how can we migrate into simplifying blockchain uh, as a step function forward from hardware. Whereas in the emerging markets, I think some of what we want to try to show in the market or to provide access to quite quickly is migrating people to the, to the digital economy. So the tool sets will vary a bit by what market, what addressable market we're in and what we feel like the market need is from Humble. So we've built the brand to be quite customizable within different environments that we're going into and modular. Okay, so just kind of doing some housekeeping stuff here. I wanted to just get this stuff out of the way. I'm a, I'm a pretty private person ultimately about stuff like this, but I think as a public company, we need to share with you all what, what we're up to financially so that you can make your decisions about whether or not you want to invest in Humble long-term. So uh, let's look at this here from a CEO perspective first. So the amount of shares I have sold of Humble is zero. Just so you know, um, the salary I will be taking this year is going to be $1. Uh, 
the amount of shares that I have retired from the float so far of my own are 137,917,334. And those are post split numbers. So those are just shares that I just, you know, literally retired, took out of the, the float of my own. Um, I've also converted 79,625,000 shares out of the common float into preferred, which is why you saw some reduction there uh, in the share count. And then lastly, I'm locking up 45% of the preferred Bs through the end of 20 calendar year 2022. So I am doing everything I can as a CEO to show you that we're gonna show up and get the reps in every day. And I'm, I'm right here with you as a shareholder and I want this to work. I, I have my entire you know, future staked on whether or not this works. So we've been at this a while. We put you know, friends and family money into building this business plus the long hours. And we're not, you know, we're right here alongside you as investors. So I wanted to just kind of share a personal moment with you all as shareholders that you know, I haven't made a nickel off of Humble yet. In fact, I've put in quite a bit of my own money. You'd be amazed at how much five law firms could cost in a month. Um, so although we think the preferred bees uh, issued in the reverse merger 45% of those are held by me. So those will just take those out of the float through 2022. And all uh, Brian and I are my one of my attorneys and I, who's a dear friend, we'll, we'll work together this weekend to draft a document, put it on the blockchain as a registry and say, hey, this is, this is the commitment um, that I'm making. And we'll put that up visibly for you all. 16.5% uh, of our shares, preferred B shares, are held by officers and directors. So people like Michelle, Karen, Adam, Jeff, people who have been at this for over a year at their own cost, you know, putting in their own money, grinding on the business. Um, they also will be subject to strict selling limits on their shares. So it's not like they can just walk in in December and start flooding the market. These are people who have been at this a long time at their own cost and their own hours putting in the work to build humble into what we what we have today and what we know it can be if we keep grinding so they are um you know fully supported by me in that and then lastly we have about 38 percent of the humble shareholders are folks who are angel investor groups people who have invested us you know invested in us to build this business over time so it's a pretty it's actually pretty traditional we ran some of the numbers on some of the other tech companies even big tech and this breakdown, it, it, it fits pretty well within, you know, the landscape of other, of other share counts and other you know, allocations and things like that. So um, uh, other than the fairly exotic move of me locking up 45% of the Bs through 2022. So it's, you know, we're, we're confident in it. And, and, you know, if it's not for you, then, then that's okay. But that's, this is what we we're doing. Um, from a blockchain patent standpoint, we have some things on the application side that we've filed some time ago. So we are pretty keen on trying to get this instant settlement network put together where money can move faster uh, on the blockchain, synthetically moving and then getting pegged into stable coins in areas that may be at risk of inflation um, or at risk of currency fluctuations, which I mean, it might be every country in the world at some point. So we really want to build out this humble ISN instant settlement network that we think can disrupt some of what's going on in the more analog environments that exist in peer to peer today. So there's definitely some, you know, did very rote peer to peer remittance um, providers that that do a great job of serving certain categories or are very fundamentally tied of smartphone to smartphone. But we'd like to really think through that on, you know, we did a lot of step throughs in different regions of what peer to peer means for people. And again, this is the most complex grid that we'll be building out, meaning there's lots of really cool elastic grids out there for sending digital monies. And we think it's really important as well that the customer on the recipient side that accepts digital cash or digital currency is able to then point and pay at the merchant. That's essentially a choke point on the recipient side. So we don't want people waiting an hour in line to pick up monies. It, it doesn't matter if you send it on a smartphone. You know, many of the emerging markets that we visited, they go, that's all great and well that U.S. tech thinks, you know, that, um, you know, you can just send money on the smartphone, but if it doesn't pan off, pan out for the recipient side, then it doesn't, doesn't quite matter. Um, so we're trying to think through that as well and uh, build, build for that, 
inevitability. We also are, you know, pretty certain that most countries will move to digital forms of their cash over time, reducing the, the, the physical float of cash bills and hard coins. And so we're trying to build for that as well within the humble and humble hubs system. Not going to happen overnight, but certainly we have a clear vision of what we want to do and we are building that and extremely focused on the peer to peer and the hubs piece. We are driving revenues across all three of our business lines. So subscription revenues through the ETXs, transaction revenues, uh, ticketing vendors and, and NFTs. I really am, if you look at top shots in the NBA doing $350 million a month on NFTs, there are hundreds of professional sports leagues around the world. We are having incredibly compelling discussions in key verticals of NFTs, sports, gaming, photography, entertainment, previous catalogs. You'll see catalogs of music and film that I believe will have as good or better second lives at the box office than they did previously just by getting chopped up into really meaningful NFTs that the collector or the trader or the investor or the customer can buy, sell, list, collect. We're going to do some really, really thoughtful, creative things with the repurposing of NFTs that I believe will give um, catalogs of content a whole second life in the digital uh, metaverse. So it's it's just such a cool space and it's limitless in terms of the amount of uh, the merchant piece. So a couple key countries, right? US, Canada, Mexico, New Zealand, Australia, Singapore were the first target zones to test. We launched so broadly on our ETXs that we wanted to stay a bit tighter on the initial release of the mobile app. The guys, the tech guys, they're very aware of the need to, to plug in digital assets and peer to peer and stable coins and all the stuff you want in there. Plus the content side that I want and the ratings and review, you know, more ratings and reviews, deeper content around ratings and reviews, much more visual and robust. So we're aware of the requests in the market and the desire for us to, to move those forward faster. And we all feel the same way. So we're, we're, we're on it. We're just going to give us some time to get that done. Um, and our growth strategy remains horizontal and vertical in terms of M&A. We will be looking to buy other mobile pay businesses or hub businesses, uh, including delivery as well. So the challenge I gave our team, and we're up to about 35, 40 people now, but I wanted to keep it really clean, just sort of one goal per division, which is basically in humble, the humble mobile pay app, we know we need to get to peer to peer, fiat and also digital. Um, and stable coins. So we, are, we know we need to get to that and we will be working on that. Um, also, you know, over time, we will be expanding the merchant load. We have partners, exclusive partners with whom we've inked deals that will allow us to, to move the point and pay rate and review business. That, that's not going to be a problem for us. The, the architectural challenges sit within fiat, digital assets, and then the merchant load, because sometimes your wallets have to be deeply separate custodially from a merchant environment to a peer-to-peer -peer environment. So a bit of firewalling there that we need to think through with our regulatory and our legal and so on. So we make all the right moves, uh, but the tech is there. We had fantastic peer-to-peer -peer banking meetings this week. Um, out here and, and certainly have some plug-in partners that have built amazing elastic money grids that literally think of it like as cell networks when Verizon or AT&T sat your coverage on top of these cell networks. That's exactly what's going to happen with digital money and Humble will be the brand that sits on top of that to do it. From a marketplace perspective, we really want to get that that NFT gallery going. So this is a really curated environment, a gallery, you know, not a theme park. So just a gallery curated, sports, gaming, photography, entertainment, stuff that's really thoughtfully curated. We can always broadcast that out to other sites that have more eyeballs. So think of Expedia or Priceline where the same airline ticket is on three or four different websites until it's sold. And that's sort of how we're gonna be experimenting with the NFT business, is we're gonna be sitting there saying, okay, we're generating world-class creative content for our, our clients, right? Whether it's sport or entertainment, but we are gonna then experiment with, are you listed exclusively at Humble? Are you also you know, being pushed out, broadcast onto OpenSea or other places that perhaps have a bit more of a tonnage-based approach uh, just to get the eyeballs? 
And then from a you know ticketing standpoint, it would be, I think, a miss for us not to integrate NFTs and ticketing into the same modality. We really think that ticketing and NFTs are going to be a blurred line over time. The, the era of getting your piece of paper and hanging it on a wall from the U2 concert in 85, that was cool and that stuff's awesome. Uh, but we really think that the ticketing and NFT experience is going to migrate to this rich, immersive digital experience. So if you're out and about and you ever tag a song on Shazam, the way they elegantly place you into this immersive music video environment, once you try to recognize that song on Shazam, is a lot of what I'm inspired by for the NFTs and the ticketing. And for us to be able to perform the acquisition of Monster, who does some of the best multimedia creative and editing work in the world is an honor. And I can't wait to put that to work in NFTs and ticketing. Uh, lastly, the business division, Humble Financial, these guys are just such a joy to work with, cranking out 25, 30,000 lines of code right on time, very focused, delivering great returns so far for our investors, both in protection to the downside, but certainly harvesting the upside uh, of, of digital assets as a new asset class. The block ETXs, we are aware that those need to get down into one click. That's just going to require some additional regulatory and custodial capacity. So we'll be meeting with banks and custodial wallet partners and really thinking through how we can uh, allow you to invest spare balances in those ETXs or park them in stable coins or uh, buy crypto and earn interest. So there's lots of cool things that can be done here. We do think the bank branch gets replaced by one of these mobile wallets and, and that's what we're building across these three divisions. So I've given our divisions their really clear goals between now and the end of the year. The timelines at which they accomplish those will be defined by product line, you know, technology, project and engineering teams. And uh, certainly on my end, from a business perspective, I want it all yesterday. So we'll, we'll, we'll marry that balance and we have a great group that's growing inside Humble. This is our business on one slide. Just, you know, if you ever are sitting around, I remember when you had to use to try to explain Bitcoin over Thanksgiving in 2017 and people were like, I just, man, it's how do you do it? So if you ever get stuck at a Thanksgiving Thanksgiving dinner or a Easter dinner or whatever. This is the one slide that I believe explains humble perfectly. So if they said, hey, Brian, you've got to go into a meeting with one slide that has no visuals, just pure schematic architecture. This is the one that defines humble. It's tokenizing different assets and asset classes into a swipe left, swipe left, right environment where people can transact in value on the blockchain. So it's a big picture thesis. It's something that is not going to happen overnight, but the tokenization aspect, the reason why we built this token engine over a year ago was that we saw the ability to begin wrapping money, right? Like physically wrapping money in tokenization, you know, something like a, a, wrapped, a wrapped blockchain approach to, to money, fiat or digital. We saw the ability to wrap ticketing and NFTs in these blocks of blockchain tokenization and then digital assets, the ETXs, which we again want to get down into one click, you know, one click custodial of a block that comprises the nav of, of, that, of that product line. So this is what we're building on this continuum. And if we can make this really immersive and elastic for the customer and synthetic to use, it's going to win, you know, in a big way. So, so this is what we're building. It's, it's our passion. I would, I would work on this for free every day until we got it right. So it's our passion and, and we're excited to have those of you on the journey that have joined us. It's just something we're really passionate about building this vision. In terms of kind of where we are in the life cycle of the business, we went back and studied the Web2 companies that did well, right? Packaging step function technologies like the internet and packaging them into one click for the customer. So Facebook, post a picture, leave a comment. Netflix, watch digital content. Um, Amazon, buy shoes online. Uh, Apple, download mobile applications and share with friends. So. We really like the way that the FANG stock set up over the last 20 years to package step function technologies like internet and cloud. And we are trying to do the same thing at Humble for the blockchain. So just by business division, just quick updates here. We did launch the, the, the mobile app. Uh, this is a 
studs of the house version of the mobile app. So give us some time before you start criticizing the wallpaper because we're, we're getting there and it's going to be the bones of something terrific. We are building this in a modular capacity. And what that means is basically Javi and the team view this, I call it the, the travel converter pack, where basically what Humble looks like to our partners in Chile, for example, is going to be different than what it looks like to you in the United States or what it looks like to you in Colombia or Brazil. So we are architecting it in a modular way where it can be customized for the region that it intends to serve. And a lot of what this is, is it's the old Cisco thing of plugging in a bunch of wires and routers and switches that you don't see, you just see a black box. And that's what Humble's about, right? Is packaging up all these really, really cool things that are going on in FinTech that are way above our pay grade to ever be able to build from scratch. We have our own IP that we're developing. We have our own blockchain, novel blockchain um, concepts that we're building around and uh, so on like the ETXs. But then there's other places where plug-in partners make an enormous amount of sense. Again, like these elastic grid partners that have built out these amazing digital money networks that are largely behind the scenes or engine inside type of environments that need brands like an Apple or a Facebook and Amazon, like they did by coming in over the top of the internet. We are doing the same thing by coming in over the top of blockchain and digital money and digital currencies and digital assets. So that's what we're building. And we hope to really simplify and package this for, for global customers and, and, and make it modular so that we can plug, plug to socket each different environment. So we have the merchant scan, pay rate and review. I want that to be really rich, immersive, the best review grid in the world. Um, and also helping people who right now are just taking cash and coins to migrate to being able to take digital monies, uh, even from tourists, for example, it's a huge business. Uh, the peer to peer side, we want to get that into both fiat and digital assets. So working hard on that with our banking partners and our technology team to move that forward as well as some custodial wallet plug-in partners. Then we have the digital assets. I call this the blockchain module. This is, of course, something we're very passionate about. And we welcome Adam Wolf in his new role as blockchain head. And we're stacking up his team as well. So this will be the digital assets piece, NFTs, ticketing, ETXs. The more we can get those into one click, this thing's just going to be a flywheel. And then lastly, delivery. We are on the look for a, you know, a very affordable, but, but perhaps well-networked delivery business that we can uh, roll out not necessarily in the US, but use its component parts, its grid, its maps, its technology to roll out in markets where we think the unit economics of delivery might actually make sense. So this is sort of the full funnel technology stack with which we're working. The search and discovery layer is we want you to be able to pull up Humble anywhere you are in the world and find an event near you, book a ticket, um, connect with people in that area to be able to pay them for merchant services or send them monies for services rendered. That's, that's the, st the stack we are working in. So it starts with discovery. The merchant layer is fairly rote commerce of people you may or may not meet again, but at least you're getting some, uh, some payment and ratings features together. And then the consumer side, which is like that deep peer to peer layer or on an individual basis, allowing us to provide you with offers that we think are great buy crypto, earn interest, park in stable coins, invest in our novel ETXs. Those are the things we're trying to package. So it's a very, very clear modular approach to what we're building. So we just need to really stick to, here's the, the engineering schematic of what we are building. And if we come to work every day and build this, we will do, do very well as a team. And again, finalizing the thesis of just that money, we believe that money is going to move to digital, largely to digital formats. We think that paper currency and hard coins probably start to, to go away from a percentage basis in terms of fiat float and that the need for a humble, humble hubs and merchant outposts will, will be evident and that we want to try to build against that architecturally. Um, so the, the key features that I've asked for in the roadmap from, from product and tech team are you know, on a peer-to-peer -peer level, be able to request money, send money, uh, and exchange money in that process. On the digital asset side, it's a custodial wallet, very separate from the merchant uh, or the fiat peer-to-peer -peer side, so very firewalled um, to buy crypto, earn interest, or park in stable coins. Those are really the, the three sort of key things we want people to be able to do in a very firewalled component of the application that's called a custodial, custodial wallet. 
Um, and then the merchant side, we have discovery, maps, ratings, reviews, and, and scan to pay. On the financial side, it just couldn't be more excited about the way that this that this business lineup is shaking out. We had a vision for this and to just see it, you know, in Times Square and out there with people subscribing to your products, you know, that you had in mind and teamed up with guys to build. It's just been an honor to, to roll this product line out with the right people and to build it. And we look forward to customizing this as well, right, by region or by uh, thematic discipline, by vertical. There's so many different ways we can apply the ETX product line, particularly in a custodial way, once we get there to the tokenization where basically it's reflected in a, in a nav um, for, for the ETX. That's, that's our goal. We wanna get these things down to one click like crazy. Um, the returns, you know, I, I don't wanna talk much about the return side because obviously investing is risky you can lose all your money there's tons of riders we need to have up around this and that we do on our website so i want to just be really clear that you know this stuff is not static right it changes every day the markets are open 24 7. this is not investment advice i'm just showing you what our products have done so far for the customer and it's really exciting to be able to to show this and say, hey, this is what we're doing on the ETX side. So we really see a lot of uh, opportunity for this, but I, I do want to just call out, you know, the uh, the investment risks and advice of this section of the deck. And then lastly, on the ticketing and NFT side, you know, we we are very cognizant of the need to build revenue structures around our business. So you can see this this particular call is a bit more business oriented because we're getting into into the, you know, run at three yards up the middle portion of our business where we need to start working the revenues and the fundamentals and getting into a process of build, building a very lasting business. Part of the way we will do that is through the ticketing piece. So the tick, tickery side, they have already achieved one of their post COVID goals, which was to achieve 1 million in gross ticket sales over the last 30 days rolling period. Sorry for that typo there. In gross ticket sales over the last 30 day rolling period, aligning well across mobile pay and NFTs, a 33% increase in ticketing sales over the previous 30 day period. So this is just an, it's an amazing product line. The group is well oiled machine. We've been hiring up on tech, engineering, uh, involving them more with their creative teams. Not only does Tickery have fantastic tick, uh, creative teams and implementation teams, but we also are excited to have them join up with the monsters of the world and start creating you know, um, these ticketing, mobile pay, ticketing and NFTs continuum across sports and entertainment and all the cool verticals that we'll be um, sort of enjoying as a recovery out of COVID. So we're just, again, I, I'm a little bit humbled or honored by the ability to just be working with businesses like this underneath and with Humble that are coming in and tucking in some of their core tech or their box office suite so that Humble can move faster to do what what it needs to do as well and growing market share and so on. So we're, we're just, it's, it's always kind of a reality check when we see these acquisitions and go, this is something we need to steward really well and do an awesome job with it. So um, to that end, we uh, announced this morning, uh, had, a, had a late night getting this one done, but we uh, put out a press release this morning that we've acquired uh, binding term sheet to acquire uh, monster uh, creative out of LA. So these are the guys when you're a big time director and you have spent eight months making a film and you want your baby put out there in 60 to 90 seconds that says that says a lot but not everything. These are the people that you call to do that. There's others in LA of course but these guys are just terrific and they're great guys as well. They're super skilled. They have a great reputation over the preceding decades of, of building amazing creative and so much of what we've discovered in our NFT conversations in our key verticals is that the creative process is equally as important as the distribution mechanism. So um, they are a hardcore packaging company for creative and NFTs and ticketing and, and we're just thrilled to sit in front of high profile companies and clients that want to create world class NFT catalogs that will last for for decades and, and that's what we'll be doing with this this talent. In terms of how we intend to distribute the NFTs a lot of what we're seeing on the creative services side is we have great creative services. We know how to tokenize in our sleep. 
you got to have some different experimentation with pricing, auctions, bid buy. We are meeting with a partner, you know, have been in negotiations with a partner that we believe is going to come forward with credit and debit card. A big impediment to NFT purchases is that folks have to convert into Ethereum and set up these sorts of things to be able to purchase the asset. Certainly you need a, a, a crypto wallet to be able to store your asset immutably on the blockchain. However, we think that the purchase process, the happy path of the purchase process is something that we can improve upon by including credit and debit card features in addition to crypto. And then in terms of distribution, you have these awesome distribution uh, platforms like OpenSea where they, they've got this thing down where you get that NFT out in front of the customer and they can decide whether or not they want to bid on it or buy it or however it gets shaken out. So we do want to experiment with dis different distribution models um, that, that build on top of some of the existing technolo technology networks like OpenSea that are just really well, really well done. And then our own NFT gallery where our creative services and our clients and some of the people with whom we're finalizing negotiations for NFTs will, will really shine and be, be the focus rather than getting lost in the, in the soup. So some of the ways we're doing that in addition to the Monster LA is we're, we're teaming up with um, folks who are creators uh, like Smalls and Raskin have been amazing walking a path with you know, constituent partners, you know, the Getty Medias, um, you know, live events, where does it sit for the artist, the photographer, making sure artists are taken care of, making sure the talent approves of what's being done or is providing inputs into how those NFTs or those tickets are created. Um, so we really want to be a client first NFT provider. This is um, curation, not tonnage. And um, we're picking up pieces of, of folks like this that are kindly advising us on how to do it really well creatively. And I think that'll pan out when you see some of the clients that we land uh, for our NFT gallery. So, you know, these are folks who have pho photographed or produced or packaged the most elite celebrities in the world in terms of Hollywood output and um, creatives and so on. And we want to apply these same methodologies to other verticals like gaming and sport and photography. So that's what we'll be working on. Um, we will be revealing that here shortly and testing um, in the coming weeks around just experimenting with some of our own house technology, some of our own auction stuff, some of the things we're doing um, with the OpenSea uh, platform. So. It'll be a it'll be a fun time, and this is a it's a largely experimental um, category where I think there's going to be a little bit of price discovery around some things, right? Some of it, some of it will be known, some of it will be unknown. You know, we'll work on sometimes maybe compressing the time period in which you have to buy it. You know, maybe an athlete performs something amazing that may have incredibly lasting value as a moment, and we give you two hours after the game to decide what the price is for that to be the one of one collector that owns that moment. And so we're going to really kind of experiment with this as a new asset class. Uh, if you look at the way the NBA is doing it, you know, they're doing these packs of $5 packs that millennials and Gen Z are just chewing up. And then they have LeBron highlights that are going for 250,000 a piece. So there's a lot of price discovery that comes in, in with this. It's, it's very similar to, to stock markets in a way or collector markets. So we'll have a lot of fun with this and we're honored by some of the partners that will be coming forward to help us curate this, this environment. So it's not a bubble, but it's a really lasting space that has some cool, cool value assigned to it. So we're, we're thankful for that. And finally, the strategic roadmap. So we completed the reverse merger in Q1. We, we have launched the Humble Marketplace. Again, the focus there being NFTs and ticketing. We'll be continuing to pursue M&A and country rights. I'm so just um, excited to work with our Chilean partners. These guys are a multifamily office, best of breed in Chile. We're going to pilot some things in Chile with them uh, around tokenization, whether it's real estate tokenization or mobile payments or collective acquisitions, venue development. We're, we're kind of figuring out exactly how we want to pilot that country. And then once we figure it out, we're going to work together to either sell country rights in other areas of Latin America 
or have someone take down the entire region. So we're just thrilled and honored to be working with those guys in Chile. They're very thoughtful. They're extremely analytical. And it's going to be fun to figure out that mousetrap in Latin America so we can roll it out very quickly at pace once we know how to make the Big Mac together. Um, we secured our ticker symbol, OTC Humble. So that was exciting. Obviously, we've gotten some pickup there on CNBC, Bloomberg, uh, Forbes. So that's been kind of fun to experiment with different media formats and so on. Um, and, you know, I'll improve every day on how we handle our media. And, and we're learning every day, too, about what formats are right for us or how we can adapt to the format. You know, I went on CNBC and it was interesting. I haven't watched a lot of TV in the last six to 12 months because I've been so under a rock trying to build this business. And I forgot how fast TV moves, network television moves. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And, you know, we, we've been doing some things, long form pieces with the magazines and I'm exploring doing a podcast with a with a large media company. So we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll try some things to see what works and, and scrap the stuff that doesn't pretty quickly. Um, we launched Humble Financial. Again, I'm so proud of how that product line is doing versus mutual funds and ETFs and so on. So shout out to those guys. We secured some initial country rights in Latin America with, with the Chilean deal. Um, and we have the binding term sheet with Tickery and Monster LA. So we've got the ticketing business, we've got the creative studio, still on the look for a delivery business, um, and the mobile app, the bones of that are launched. So we're, we're, we're feeling like we're making a ton of progress. It's never fast enough for me, but you know, our teams are trying like crazy to get stuff pushed out. Um, we've got the audited company financials, so that's, that's moving along and we'll continue to do that on a quarterly basis. Um, and so on. And, and we hope to really show uh, kind of some around the term behavior in Q, Q3, Q4, really getting into a more fundamental framework of our revenues, particularly with the acquisitions that we have either, you know, that we've either made or that we will be that we will be looking at uh, from a top line revenue perspective to fill this thing in underneath the pyramid. Um, and then lastly, just driving revenue growth, as I say, with Q3, we really want to get a strong foundational base of top line revenues and ticketing, NFTs, mobile pay acquisitions, um, and so on. So, so we, we will be extremely focused on revenue in Q3 and Q4 when we have these component pieces ready to go. Um, and some of the product lines that we're playing in like NFTs can drive extreme levels of top line very quickly if you, if you catch a bid on who you're working with. Um, and then always we'll be improving the technology product. Like if there's, you know, an investment we make, it's in our tech team. So I want us to have the best tech team in the world, both in blockchain and, and in traditional fiat. So, so that is something we will relentlessly invest in, uh, in addition to m and I'll also take out, um, you know, under a certain level, I'll put this in my note over the weekend, but I'll, I'll also be taking out from my shares anything that we do in M&A, so there's no dilution. I'll, I'll just go ahead and commit to that as well. And then lastly, the shareholder conference. We looked around a bit downtown yesterday in Nashville. I think we found a place with that, so we'll make some announcements there. Uh, I think you saw on Twitter a few hours before I came on the call here. It's, all, it's always a flurry to get all these slides done before we come on, but uh, we're going to be coming in as the official NFT provider of the Pilgrimage Festival. So what an awesome group of guys and, and an amazing uh, uh, venue. Like this thing is going to be so cool. We're going to just try to make it the most innovative festival in terms of NFT content. And, you know, the whole goal is for us to have this mobile pay ticketing and NFT continuum that we're going to build in um, to our mobile application and, and our website. And so, um, you know, we're, we're really excited to work with live festivals or events on what NFTs look like. What does the artist want? What is the artist, artist comfortable with? Can we get their input? Uh, how does the IP shake out? What is the, you know, where's the dedicated photographer or videographer to do that? Where's the editing bay? You know, so just really thinking through the quality procurement of fewer, bigger, better NFTs and making sure it's a great experience for the fan and for the artist um, and so on. So, so we're really excited about that. I think we may try to do a shareholder West event. Um, it depends. I, I haven't been in touch with the guys at Kabo, but I think I'd like to try to do something on the West Coast with Kaboo, and certainly we've we've put a bid in here with Pilgrimage to do something uh, shareholders Southeast and Midwest uh, in Nashville. So certainly hold that last weekend in September to try to come down here and do some things around the Pilgrimage Festival. I'm not sure if the Titans are playing yet on that Sunday. We'll know May 12th, uh, but that might be fun to get a group 
group set of group tickets to go out to the Titans game. And then on the Friday evening, we may try to do something downtown in Nashville. So we're, we're efforting that. We had good dialogues with a, a venue in downtown Nashville that we like. Um, so we'll, we're hunting that, but it's, it, we're pretty close on putting out some, some notes about shareholder West and shareholder Southeast, which is probably how we'll, we'll do this thing. So anyway, it's been a really fun time back out on the road. We represent you all wherever we go. And uh, we just want to thank you for, um, you know, con consistently tuning into what Humble is up to. And we hope to show you progress on a monthly basis of everything we're doing to try to make this business come to life. So thank you again. And, and we appreciate it. And we'll see you again in a month.